Ahoy hoy interwebs, welcome to another slice of techie fun. My name remains Dave. Well I've updated my naming scheme and would now like to be known as Jacob XT. And today we're going to be checking out the AMD Adrenaline update to see what the latest Radeon software can do and why it makes Nvidia Shadow Play look like something you'd find on an RM Nimbus. Yes, AMD have taken to creating a big software update on an annual release cadence. It started out with the Catalyst Update Omega, and since we've had Crimson, Crimson Relive, and now Crimson Relive Redux Rinse Repeat. Actually, no, we, we, we stepped away from the Crimson stuff, and we're onto Adrenaline now. That whole Relive Redux Repeat type stuff, that was just a little joke that happened at the Vega launch, and the interwebs ran with it. But well, I thought AMD was sticking with colours and different shades of red for all their launches. Yeah, I think we've now run out of cool sounding names of red and they're not allowed to use Ruby because of some software conflicts. So, Adrenaline, that's what you get, it's this colour of some rose. But what about Cerise, Vermilion, Russet? There's so many other things to choose from. Yeah, whatever the etymology of the name, this new update features some minor updates, some major updates and some very, very new bits. So let's delve right in. The brand new Radeon overlay is the most obvious change AMD have made with their latest update. It's also the part which highlights just how anachronistic Nvidia's shadow plate now looks. Where the Crimson Relive update introduced an icon-driven overlay, which looked like the game DVR stuff Microsoft introduced with Windows 10, Adrenaline's overlay is far more feature-packed and easy to understand. You can bring it up on the desktop or in-game, but ostensibly it gives you instant access to a host of features that might otherwise be hidden behind layers of setting screens. As before, you can control all the relive stuff, so screenshotting, recording and streaming is front and centre as you'd expect. If you're a proper nerd like us, however, you'll appreciate the level of performance monitoring you can bring to your game fund too. There's full suite of monitoring settings, so you can choose which to display in-game and whether to record them in your streams too. You can also use them to record benchmarks. For example, if you want to know what sort of performance boost you might be getting from playing around with the game's graphical settings. These are still rather niche concerns for a great deal of gamers, but the new overlay also gives you access to features which could help a lot more of us. The instant access to the Radeon Chill and FreeSync settings are a real boon for adrenaline. Normally they're obfuscated behind layers of Radeon setting screens, but being able to access them on a game-by-game -game basis is incredibly handy. The FreeSync tab lets you disable or enable FreeSync, which is useful for the few games which don't play nice with AMD's frame syncing tech. The Radeon Chill setting works in a similar way. There is a global on-off setting, but you can opt in or out of it via the in-game overlay, meaning it's automatically saved to the particular profile of the game you're currently running. Chill itself is an almost invisible AMD feature, which uses an algorithm to figure out what's happening on screen and whether you really need a high frame rate at the time. If the camera, i.e. you, isn't moving around a lot, then it automatically limits the frame rate, which can massively drop the power draw and the temperature of your graphics card. It then knocks the frame rate up again as soon as you'll start shifting around. It's an impressive energy saving feature, and while it will become visible in benchmarks, it shouldn't be at all visible to you as a gamer, as it's quick enough not to lag behind your game. The Radeon Chill feature is one of the biggest behind the scene changes in Adrenaline. It now operates via a blacklist rather than a whitelist. It used to be turned off as standard, but now it's powerful enough to be turned on and left on, with only games on a testing blacklist being blocked from using the feature. AMD have tested thousands of games with Chill, and so far the blacklist remains empty. The other headline grabbing feature is the new app that AMD have created to go alongside their Adrenaline software update. Yes, AMD have moved into the noughties and decided that they need a mobile or tablet app to go alongside their graphics cards. The AMD Link app is available for Android and iOS devices. Now this initial basic iteration of the application allows you to connect to your PC, as long as you're both plumbed into the same network, and monitor things like frame rate, GPU clock speed, and CPU utilization. More interesting than that, for the budding streamer at least, is the ability to capture screenshots via your phone or start and stop a relive recording or entire stream. It can be set up as a single large button on your always on phone screen, meaning it can be sat by your keyboard and you just need to mash the screen without looking down from your monitor to start or stop a capture. It's not the most useful app at the moment and it feels very much like a Gen 1 version, but you can see where AMD are trying to move into the future with this and their future for streaming support. Yeah, and they're really going hard with the streaming support at the moment, because they've also partnered with a company called Stage 10. So that means they're integrating the Relive output into their browser-based live streaming mixing desk software, which is really impressive. But India also, they've separated out the audio tracks for voice and gaming. Uh, you've, they've added in in-game chat support as well. And they've also added in chroma key support so you can get all that disembodied head stuff going on too. One of their engineers also managed to reduce the overhead that the Radeon software places on a graphics card in his spare time. Another big part of the Adrenaline update is that both Vulkan and by extension Linux are more heavily featured this time around. Most of the new features being introduced to the Adrenaline update were also being introduced with a thought to Vulkan and Linux too. So the Relive Capture stuff is now Vulkan supported, as is Chill, and the Enhanced Sync, the poor man's free sync, is also being brought into Vulkan. And we've also had a whole new Linux driver package created too. 
Vulcan is the direct successor to AMD's close to the metal Mantle API, and the only real competition to Microsoft Direct X, but so far we've only seen it being used in a handful of serious games, with Doom and Wolfenstein 2 being the most obvious. So why are they investing so heavily in Vulcan? Surely it's a dead end right now. We've asked AMD, and while they couldn't say what was coming with Vulcan support next year, they've confirmed that they are investing quite a bit with Vulcan, and wouldn't be doing so if it was a dead end road. Why are we investing in Vulcan, AMD responded? Maybe because we see what's coming and we think that Vulcan is worth investing in. What these upcoming Vulcan games are, we don't know. The Far Cry 5 devs have been very vocal in their support for the Vega architecture, at least they were prior to launch, so maybe that's one of them. Potentially Metro Exodus 2. And Cloud Imperium games have also switched to Vulcan, so maybe Squadron 42 really is coming out this year. So that's AMD's new Adrenaline software in all its finery. Yeah, it's a powerful bit of kit, surfacing per game features that you might not otherwise think to use. And it also adds in a little bit of nerd fun for us serial benchmarkers too. So when are NVIDIA going to rip up Shadowplay and start again? Yeah, that's the big question. So, thanks for watching and if you like what you've seen and heard, give us the old classic like and subscribe. And check back both here and on the website for more PC gaming and hardware fun. Bye! Thanks for watching!